and a very good evening to you. It is, of course, Tuesday, and it's the 10th of December 2013. I had to look at my little sheet there because I always forget the date. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, a very quick sound check that was uh, if you saw pre live, pre show. Um, so, what have we got installed today? Well, we've got a little bit of news stories, uh, and then we've got show as yours. And then in the second half, I've put together a little VT, and it's basically it's not quite chronological, um, but it's a lot of what's happened this year to do with uh, all the campaigns that have been going on. So hopefully you'll enjoy that. But all that has to be, yes it does, has to be, after the titles. This scene is proudly sponsored by Health Evade, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e -liquid. Yes, it is Tuesday. Yes, it is the 10th of December and you're watching Vapor Scene here on Vapertrolls.tv. Good evening. Hello. Um, a nice few of you in chat tonight. Thank you very much uh, for stopping by. I know that um, there's a big football match on tonight on ITV, which I should be looking at afterwards. <laughs> and I've caught catching up on Elementary, which happens to be on the same time as my show, which is not very good. But that's what the Sky Plus box is for. Is it not? Yes. So, as I said uh, at the beginning, we've got a uh, couple of news stories to go through, and then um, we've got a bit of show yours. And then in part two, I've put together a little bit of VT, uh, which kind of chronicles-ish um, what's been going on in the last 12 months since um, the TPD reared its ugly head. Yes. So uh, we'll move swiftly on with um, this little bit of story. And uh, this is actually from last week's Quoting Guardian. And it's a, a follow-up story on the chap Paul Scott from Carsh Alton, who was sacked for using his e-cig at work, uh, worked at Beddington Lane um, for a, uh, a refuse company. Uh, and uh, it seems to be that the CEO of Elites has taken up his cause uh, and uh, he's going to be funding his legal expenses. Um, and it's Adrian Everett, who's the CEO of Elites, and uh, he said, we are delighted to fight for our rights for the consumers, for our consumers. Uh, it's not surprising this has happened to Paul Scott. Companies like Riridor have failed to create policies around e-cigarettes and so haven't trained their managers to tell the difference between an electronic cigarette with a glowing green tip and a combustible cigarette that creates, creates a fire risk. Yes. Interesting that e-lights are getting involved. Um, do we think it's a good thing that an e-cigarette company are fighting the cause for one of their customers? Or do we think it's a bad thing that an e-cigarette company is getting involved in the fight um, between an employer and an employee? I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence. I don't know what you think, chat, but I'm kind of on the fence on how I feel about that. Um, it will be interesting to see the outcome, certainly of what happens in any um, legal action that is taken uh, and whether that will then set a precedent with other companies or, or whether it will force companies to actually get a policy together um, because a lot of companies still make you go outside and vape with the smokers um, which is rather disturbing really um, but some companies don't so you know we're still faced with the same old the same old same old aren't we um, the other company that's been hitting the headlines yet again, um, and this is from last week's Mail Online, um, it's the old VIP advert, uh, specifically the one with the lady. Um, and there's a picture of the lady underneath, actually, this, uh, this piece. Um, but they'd received, up until last week, 147 complaints, the advertising standards people. Uh, and, um, yes, the, uh, the spokesman for the firm uh, which produces itself uh, from uh, from VIP. Uh, due to advertising regulations, we are not permitted to include the product in the ad. So we decided to take a tongue-in-cheek approach. 
<laughs> a tongue-in-cheek approach to appeal to an adult audience and communicate the superior taste of VIP products. E-cigarettes offer smokers an alternative that is widely regarded to be less damaging to health than traditional tobacco cigarettes. And at VIP, we only market our products to existing smokers over the age of 18. So they knew when they saw those adverts, when they commissioned those adverts, they knew that it was going to create some controversy. That is definite. Uh, and I did notice twice yesterday during the Royal Variety performance, twice that advert was on, albeit slightly edited. It wasn't the full length. <laughs> Uh, no pun intended. It wasn't a full length advert. Uh, it was slightly edited. So uh, I don't know whether they've made a few tweaks or they've had to make a few tweaks. Um, but it's still out there. And it was at a you know, reasonable time. It was half nine, quarter to ten, something like that, uh, that I saw it. Um, so after the watershed, but still were youngsters watching. I think that's the thing, isn't it? It's a case of think of the children. Well, you know, children should be bed at nine o'clock, really, shouldn't they, on a school night? Yes, that's what Sky Plus is for. Um, but, you know, during a show that, um, that children are going to watch, I think that's where people are coming from. Uh, and I wonder how many of the people that complained uh, were of the female persuasion and how many that complained were of the male persuasion. I fancy it's probably more female than male because that particular advert is, well, it's quite rude, isn't it? Yeah, we had the discussion a few weeks ago when I showed you all of them, uh, and it is fairly uh, close to the mark. I was going to say something else, but I had to stop myself. It's fairly close to the mark, so uh, yeah, really strange. Let's uh, see what you're saying in chat. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Somebody think of the children. Uh, that's a thing we get all the time, isn't it? Uh, think of the children. Um, but there you go. Um, I wasn't going to go into other things, but I'm pretty sure that Dave's going to tackle those tomorrow. So I'm not going to go into what's been going on the past couple of days. Um, but I think what we'll do is um, we will go into uh, this week's show is yours. And then uh, when we come back, we'll uh, look at something else. See you in a minute. And now it's time for show is yours. Sponsored by Flavor Art UK. <laughs>
show is yours. Sponsored by Flavor Art UK. Yes, that was this week's show, uh, show is yours. I had to very quickly turn my uh, sound off then, otherwise it would have been uh, the first train on Platform 3. Uh, echo, echo. Yes, that was this week's show is yours. Uh, and uh, who is the winner? Here we go. The winner this week is Paul McDonald, who sent those two photos in on two separate occasions, but I've collaged them together because I like this smiley, happy face uh, behind all those mods. So well done, Paul. I will contact you a little bit after the show uh, and I will send you an email and it will tell you how you get hold of your bottle of juice. And if you would like to do the same, Vaporscene at vaportrails.tv. Get it to me by next Tuesday at 12 o'clock and you will go into the mix. Uh, as it's coming up to that day, you know, a couple of weeks time, um, <laughs> bar humbug as I saw earlier in chat, um, some Christmas ones if you want to send a Christmas one. You saw a couple there, one from last year, one from this. Uh, and uh, we shall see what happens and see if there's any nice Christmas ones. And I think what I'll do for the end of the year is I'll pull together 12 of the best photos. Um, they may have one already, they may not. Uh, and then I'll put them to the vote and you can vote which is the best one of the year. How's that um, for the final one of the year? Um, we're coming up to nearly ad break, but I was just looking in chat there during, during that um, VT. And uh, I think we're pretty much all agreed that we don't like those adverts. Uh, and I was actually mentioning last night how much they would cost for the adverts at that time of night. Must have been quite expensive. So only the big companies can afford to do that in the first place and only big companies can afford to get adverts professionally made um, but still I think something a little bit more subtle would have been good I mean we've had innuendo we've had boardiness with all the carry-on films and some of them were quite close um, to the mark but you had to understand them they were double entendre it wasn't just filth um, but there you go we digress as we do <laughs> okay let's go into the break and uh, when we come back I've got that bit of VT for you see you in two minutes Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health EV, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. Now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. And it is indeed welcome back to part two. <laughs> Welcome back. Hello. You're watching Vapor Scene on VaporTrails.tv. You already know that. Of course you do. Now then, 
We've seen a lot of posts over the past few days um, on various forums uh, and people saying the words scaremongering, um, complacent uh, and other such things. Um, and I thought I'm going to pull together some VT that kind of chronicles what's happened um, over the last 12 months. Um, you have seen some of this stuff before. I've kind of re-edited, rejigged it, changed it around a bit. And it's not entirely chronological. Um, bits here, bits there. But it's kind of a story of what's happened over the last 12 months um, with all the various campaigns and things that have been going on. So I hope you enjoy. See you in a few. I bought my first electronic cigarette on the 4th of September 2010. Unlike a lot of people, uh, I bought mine more out of curiosity rather than through some desire to quit smoking. Uh, I know now, uh, by talking to people on forums and at vape meets, that a lot of people tried various NRT treatments and various methods to quit smoking and had very little success with that and now look at electronic cigarettes as something that helped them quit. Very quickly after I started vaping I set up the Happy Vapor blog uh, which is still running today although it doesn't get as much attention as it probably deserves. Um, in many ways this it was at that point that that really was the start of my vaping journey to be honest. It really genuinely has improved my quality of life. So here we are at the beginning of 2013. Uh, it's the 7th of January as I record this. And uh, on my Vapor Trails TV show last night, we, um, we were discussing the EU Tobacco Products Directive, the revision that was published on the 19th of December last year. Uh, which, if it goes through unchallenged and unamended, will amount to uh, a ban on vaping as we know it. Um, and for all the reasons that I've spoken about in this little film, I cannot, for the life of me, understand how anybody could think that that's a sensible thing to do. So the, the next part of my vaping journey is quite clear. I'm going to be involved in campaigning and spreading the word and making my resistance and my feelings known about this. Um, even if uh, we get this thing kicked away, which is, let's be honest, that's, that's not a foregone conclusion. Um, we've still got the MHRA in the UK to report back in May. And 2013 promises to be quite a challenging year for those of us who enjoy electronic cigarettes as I do. Uh, but I won't be disheartened and uh, I shall fight the good fight. Twitter bomb. Twitter bomb. Retweet. Hello, my name's Andrew. Hi, I'm Alex in Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, Lee here. Hi, my name's Vincent. I prefer to be called Vinny, actually. Hi there, my name's Matt. I am a vapor. Hiya, Chris again. My name's Paul, and I'm a vapor. Hi, my name's Andy, and I use electronic cigarettes. Hi, my name's Lorian. I've been vaping for two years now. I'm here to tell you my story. Hi, my name's Paul, I'm 32 years old and basically I just wanted to tell you my story about 
finding e-cigs. How did I start vaping? I started vaping just over a year ago now. Christmas 2008, I had the seventh of a string of heart attacks. The seventh nearly killed me. I've also got several other people to, in my local area to change to electronic cigarettes too, and they express similar benefits. Please don't ban them. I ultimately hope common sense prevails here and that e-cigs are removed from the tobacco products directive. Please, for God's sake, don't let the EU do what they want to do with these things. They should be left as consumer devices. All of the flavors should be left alone so that people can use what works for them. They need to be left to save lives. My name is Darren Burns and I run a company called Safer Sigs, which is an electronic cigarette company based here in uh, Blandford in Dorset. Today we've got a visit from our, our local MP Bob Walter who's coming to discuss the um, Tobacco Products Directive with us. UKIP are totally hostile to the ban on electronic cigarettes and indeed we're hostile to any sort of cigarette ban. We believe that in a free society, if you want to smoke for example in a pub, you want to have a cigarette with your pint, that should be between you and the landlord of the pub, not a politician, as we all know, very few of whom ever go into pubs and meet real people. I haven't been here before. I'm very pleased that this old redundant car showroom is now being used as a vibrant business. Um, the concern of the electronic cigarette manufacturers and retailers, their concern about the, imp the impact of those changes on their business, but crucially on the consumers. My father was a very heavy smoker. He died like so many heavy smokers of lung cancer. I watched him die over a period of months. He was a radiologist himself, so from the moment he first saw his own x-ray, he'd have known exactly what was coming over the, the weeks that followed. I suspect, because he was someone who I can't believe would ever have responded to nicotine patches. He was a, you know, he always had a cigarette in his hands. I suspect that if he'd had the opportunity of using e-cigarettes, then his life might have been extended for some months and perhaps years. Man with camera. Hello, Maddie. I don't look this good this time of the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Is it daylight yet? And we're here in front of the European Parliament and all those people over there are coming across here to join us. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, these balloons represent the lives of smokers that would be saved if the European Parliament and Envy Committee got it right. Today, these are lives that can be saved by E6 because E6 saves Stay lives! Linda McAvan, Labour MEP for Yorkshire and the Humber, is leading the EU's challenge on e cigs and recently was interviewed on camera by one of her own constituents. Can I just show you this that is from The Lancet? I was asking Linda McAvan um, about all sorts of questions that we need to be answered. She did seem to be on the defensive quite a lot. Well, I don't know who wrote the, I mean, The Lancet publishes different views and the medical profession has been divided to a certain extent. She didn't want to, to look at it. She didn't want to say, yeah, what, what is actually here is right. It's just, it's not what she wants. I don't know who these doctors are, not from the UK. 
She was actually in one of the sessions where uh, Jacques Suzak um, was actually there and he was one of the authors of that report. We are not trying to take them off the market, not trying to ban them at all. These proposals that the Lithuanian Presidency and the Commission have come up with will allow only single-use cartridges, no refillable units, no tanks, none of the kind of stuff that we use on a daily basis. That, no. That means no juice that can be sold in the EU. It allows only for flavours that are already approved for use in NRT unless those flavours are attractive to children and non-smokers. Um, who decides? Who indeed? It bans all advertising in press or printed publications, except trade publications, on radio and on TV and other audio-visual services and the internet through information society services. Guess what Vapertrails.tv is? It's an information society service. We would be banned. The more cigarettes you smoke over a longer period of time, the more risk you take of harming your body with a vascular disease of every kind and cancers of many different types. Just at the end of the bar we have what appears to be a lot of people smoking, but in fact it's just electronic cigarettes. So it's, it's like smoking, but it's just vapour, really. No tobacco or that. It's healthy smoking. <laughs> the electronic cigarette community is a really inspiring and unique phenomenon. It's the most incredible thing I've ever known. The problem is, and here is where the problem lies, everything that's on the market now, within 21 days, it's got to be off the shelves. Because it looks like smoking and it's designed to provide pleasure to people, it therefore must be a bad thing these would be outlawed. I want to win today. We've got to win today. Because e-cigs save lives! I think banning them is ridiculous. I think they're banning it because they're getting no revenue from it. This legislation is now being, is now being pushed through at a fast rate our fear is that there is a time delay in health consequences. Just like with cigarettes, it might take decades before we see the health damage. In the effort to protect health and safety, you've actually made things worse. The tobacco industry generates profits of over 3 billion euros per year in Europe alone. Tobacco companies see that profit disappearing as a result of the introduction of e-cigarettes. My argument continues to be, if I can go and buy 40 cigarettes, why on earth can't I buy an e-cigarette? It's completely ludicrous. I think they are trying to suppress something well before it's had a chance to prove itself, um, which I, I think it is in the process of doing and will do and will be proven as a, a really good thing. We'll just go straight back to cigarettes, I would think. I think it's a disgrace. The first thing I'd do is go out and buy some more cigarettes. These are the way forward. The EU ban would push me back to cigarettes and basically I don't want that. It's going to make a, a big mistake if they enforce any ban. Which will probably finish me off. That will be the consequence. And there you go, a little bit long, I know. Um, but I thought, looking back at all the work that as a community we have managed to do, all the things as a community 
we have managed to do this year. Uh, and it's not a year since we found out. It was the 19th, so it's next week, isn't it? Um, but we must keep going. We must keep fighting. And there's been, obviously, some changes over the past couple of days. And I know Dave will be discussing those tomorrow. Uh, and Andy Sutton will be making an appearance very soon. Keep watching VT TV this week because he's going to be doing some shows with some behind the scenes look at the SWAF stuff and also some more information about what's going on. So uh, watch out for the rest of the week. So I've gone past as I normally do. <laughs> uh, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget tomorrow night VT Talk with Dave and Sav plus guests. I'm not exactly sure yet, but tune in at nine o'clock and you will find out. In fact, tune in at quarter to nine for the pre-show because the pre-show is always cracking too. Uh, don't forget as well, Thursday is the Hayes Hour with Dave, possibly Keith. Um, Sunday it is Dave with Dave Kitson with uh, Dave's Tackle Box and of course Tino Tip on Monday. I am here next Tuesday looking for the credits and until then I shall see you soon. Tatty bye. <laughs>